So let's start now with the um, dynamic nature of cycles. What is the dynamic nature? So first you have to deal with different e effects. So the first effect I want to show you is um, the so-called offset shifts. So this means we have cycles with phase distortion and you see by the red moving cycle and it's still the same cycle as the gray one but it's moving a little bit about the tops and the lows so the, the, the starting point of this cycle is moving slightly during time and this is what you will observe in real-time price behavior. So, so this is the first effect. Now let's move on to another effect. This is the second effect which I call the breadth of cycles. So we deal about extraction and contraction of the same cycle. So this is a little different effect than the first one. If you have close look on the um, a red cycle here, which is breathing, so the starting point still stays the same, stays the same as you can see here, but the length of this cycle is moving a little bit minus plus the original static cycle. So you see that the length is varying a little bit over the time. It's sometimes it's a little bit smaller, sometimes it's a little bit longer, but in the end it's the same dominant cycle. So this is my main understanding. We are not talking about a different cycle by this red one as you can compare to the gray one. It's looking quite the same. We have just a little bit breathing of the cycles which is allowed to have the length shifting a little bit and you clearly will see the difference. So what we do next is uh, we will put um, yeah, both, both effects on the chart. So in the real world, for sure you will see both effects. So we have offset shifts, extraction and contraction during the same time. And this is what this animation shows you. So we see dynamic cycles here and on the left chart this shows you the past where the analysis is done and on the right side you see the future. This is where you do your, your projections on the price chart here. And if you watch closely the left side of this chart here, this is where you do your analysis. So you see this, this uh, the red cycle is just moving slightly around the static one here. So, But now if you move over to the right side of the chart, where you see the same dynamic behavior, you see that the deviation between the red a dynamic cycle and the gray static cycle is quite more bigger than on the left side on the chart. And, and this causes the problem in trading because if you do static, static forecast it might look good on the left side of the chart because it's just moving slightly around the static one but if you then move over to the right side of the chart you will see that you have a huge deviation between the theoretical static cycle and the dynamic component which is moving at a very high rate um, with the difference between the cycle. And this causes a real headache if you use static cycles um, on, the, on the future on the right side of the chart. But the right side of the chart is quite the important one. L let me give you an example on this, wha wha why static cycles will lead to nowhere here. So we will, we will have two examples here, example A, example B, and um, the black line here just um, uh, will, will, uh, will be the, the price behavior, so this will be the price chart, and we have exactly the same A, B, so the same price behavior here. And in the first example A, the red one would be um, a detected static cycle here on the left chart of the, uh, of the chart. And if, if we do our, our, our validation, we will see that this top is this top here. Then we see just this low is aligned to this low here. This top projection is the top in the price. Then we have the low in the price, which is quite close to this projected low here. So we would conclude that this detected cycle would be a valid one uh, to use for projection. So now let's have a look at the at the second example B. So we have the same price and here it's quite a little bit different detected chart on the left side here. So we here we have the top aligned with the top of the price, we have the bottoming area aligned with the with the with the bottom here, then we have the top which is quite in alignment with the theoretical cycle top. Then we have the cycle bottom area where the, where the low is and the move up. So so if you just look at the left side of the chart both cycles are correct on the left side.
So now the interesting part comes if we move over to, to the right side of the chart where we would pl place our trading. So the first projection would give us the, the, this situation that we, we have in the bottoming area and would expect an up move here from this situation. However, if we would follow the second projection, that would this would um, um, tell us that we are at a cycle top, so we should expect a down move from here. So, um, this is what I would say. So, on the left chart, we clearly have a quite similar cycle detected, which is which is the same dominant cycle. But if you move over to the right side to to our projection for trading, we get quite different projects. And, and this is exactly the reason uh, why classic, cycle, uh, classic static cycle projection fail too often if you're familiar with static cycle projection. And exactly that underpins the importance for a dynamic component update. So you need a tool or you need an approach that is able to follow the two effects which I've shown you earlier. So the phase shifting and the length shifting which will happen, which is a dynamic which, which is a nature of cycles. But we, we try to make it too easy if we just follow static projections. So my my main work during the last years was to develop an approach that is able to monitor the dynamic component and to give us an update on the dynamic component on the price chart. So this is exactly what the next section is about. So we will now move from theory to practice and I will show you with a real life example uh, what this will mean on the price chart. So let's have a look at this video here. So as we start with a blank chart here on the 8th of October we will apply the standard cycle tools with nothing special. We use the dynamic cycle explorer uh, with the standard settings here attach it to the chart as I will do it now and as you can see the uh, dynamic and dominant cycle is detected automatically by this uh, toolkit here. So you don't have to set up um, the cycle lengths, the actual active dominant cycle is detected automatically here um, as you can see here and this current um, carrier wave as I call it the dominant carrier wave is plotted for sure into the into the future on the right side of the chart here. So this is a starting point and this cycle shows us that we would expect the upswing to last until until uh, end of April, beginning of May. I will just mark the time window where we would expect the estimated time of arrival of the next market top here on the chart. So what we do now is we move forward in time bar by bar and the difference to static cycle tools is that I we don't see uh, this static cycle projection here as fixed. So we reevaluate um, the dominant cycle situation bar by bar. So I move forward now bar by bar. You can see the blue dot will will step um, week by week into the future and price will progress. So we go ahead. You can see slightly here um, that the dominant cycle is adjusted and changes only a little bit. So you can see price moves up nicely as uh, the cycle suggests here and I will go forward and if you watch the current situation here it's moving slightly but only slightly. The general dominant cycle stays the same here as we can see and now we move into our projected time window and now we come to the projected um, cycle top which was the 29th of April here. What is interesting now, if we progress more in time, you can especially see now the dynamic behavior. So um, the next projected um, ETR point um, by the 27th of January. So this is this is the next point in time where we are interested in for, for the major low to come. Now we progress and expect the market to move down into the end of 2011. So again, we move forward bar by bar as time goes forward. You see price comes down nicely as projected by the dominant cycle. And now you can see uh, what happens here. So the, the main dominant cycle stays still the same, but the estimated uh, time of arrival for the next low comes now closer to the current day. You see this is moving more 
to, to the left so price is really pushing down a lot and in this during the same period you see that the ETA point now is is moving to the left so as we did our first projection here based on this dominant cycle the first ETA was seen in January 2012 but now as we have progressed forward in time you see that the next low would be expected to come in more early here in the beginning of October so th this is this is the main point what I want to to highlight in regards to dynamic cycles so we do not see this as a static projection and just wait until January we will reassess every day so the market comes down heavily and so the dynamic component checks the current phase and length setting and, and ha will expect the next low to come in more early so um, and this is especially the situation here on um, September the 2nd this this is invalid now here in January we are looking for a low at the beginning of October 2011 here you see now this um, dynamic cycle here stays really stable again and uh, as we arrive on the projected low point here uh, we already passed it uh, by a week or so this is this is the expected low uh, which has come in nicely as it was projected the fine-tuning of this trade was done on the daily chart and now um, th the next top is is seen somewhere here in the future